All right, sticking with China, the ongoing Hong Kong protests are showing no signs of cooling off. The ripple effects now forcing a CEO of a major Hong Kong airline to step down. Our very own Akiko Fujita joins us to break down the latest. What's going on? Yeah, so this is Hong Kong's flagship carrier, and we're talking about Cathay okay. Pacific. Um, their CEO, Rupert Hogg, announcing that he's going to be resigning just about two years after he took the helm. So he has been in place since May 2017, but this comes in a week where we saw a lot of volatility with the stock, but also with this company that was really caught in the middle. Uh, remember last weekend, you saw all the protesters storm the Hong Kong International Airport. Uh, that led to uh, Cathay having to uh, delay about a thousand, or cancel a thousand of their flights. And, you know, Cathay was called out by the aviation regulators over in China who said that some of their employees had been taking part in the protest, that they needed to be fired. They removed two pilots and then two additional employees, so four employees that were fired. Now, in addition to that, uh, the regulators came out and said that they needed to vet every single one of the crew members for Cathay who were serving on flights that operated into the mainland. So Cathay has kind of become uh, sort of this proxy in the middle of China and Hong Kong as well. And Rupert Hogg is saying, look, uh, I'm taking responsibility. I'm the one that led this all the way. Uh, you have to wonder how much pressure came from Beijing. And Beijing certainly has to see this at least as a PR win. So is this happening, that is the CEO stepping down, more because of those employees being involved in the protests or the canceled flights? Because the canceled flights, to me, well, I don't see how you can fault the airline. I mean, aren't there other airlines? All flights were canceled uh, out of that airport for like two days, right? I mean, Cathay Pacific wasn't the only airline canceling flights. So it's hard to just point to one reason why Rupert Hogg is stepping down, because even before all of this started, Cathay had been a very uh, rough position financially. They were just coming back from two consecutive years of annual losses, just returning to profitability. And so you add that into the fact that because they've been caught right in the middle of the protest, we've mm. seen massive volatility in the stock. You know, it's tough to say whether this was pressure directly from Beijing. Now they've got uh, a CEO who is stepping in who is a Chinese national. Um, that's not rare. I mean, this has happened before. But, you know, it, it's interesting to see the pressure Cathay has come under because this is not a Chinese company. This is owned by Swire Capital, which is a Hong Kong company. I'm but you note that. Air China has a stake in Cathay Pacific as well. But it's not just the airlines, correct, that are being impacted by the Hong Kong pro protests. I feel like we've, when we've t thought of this story, we thought of it as a China story, but it mm. actually is far wider than that, right? It is. In, in, there's a lot of multinational companies who have massive bases in Hong Kong, right? And they also have secondary listings on the Hong Kong exchange. So you look at a, a bank like Standard Chartered Bank, which is a British bank that has a massive presence in Hong Kong. Uh, you look at a company like Samsonite. They have a secondary listing in Hong Kong, too. So there's a lot of companies that aren't Hong Kong or Chinese companies, per se, who have a huge stake uh, in what's happening there. And I should you know, point out that Hong Kong last year, the Hong Kong exchange changed their listing rules uh, to to try and attract more of these big tech companies. And so this has become kind of a destination for uh, a lot of companies that maybe are a little worried about listing in the US, particularly Chinese tech companies. And they became the global IPO leader just last year. Now we're hearing reports that a company like Alibaba, which had planned a secondary listing in Hong Kong, could potentially delay that. So uh, that's something to look out for the longer this drags on. And none of that is to mention the American casino companies that all have uh Big ties to Macau. Macau. You know, I know Macau is sort of beside the point right now, but that's another aspect. Well, and also they've been struggling because the Chinese economy has been slowing down. So, again, another uh, example of, uh, you know, companies that are getting hit from both sides right now. Thanks, Akiko. Right.